Busy streets could get more congested as road crews get to work this week. New this noon, we are helping you make your way around town and we're showing you the detours you need to be aware of. Police are still trying to catch a killer, but first they need some more information. What they know about the moments leading up to a deadly shooting still ahead. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. The public corruption trial of Michelle Barrientes Vela offering insight today as to how she reacted to the Texas Rangers investigation. It's day five of the trial and her own former clerk turned whistleblower is still on the stand. Prosecutors say she tampered with security payment logs for a West Side Park, then provided fake records to law enforcement. Judge Vila Meza has hoped to have the trial wrapped up by Thursday, but the state still has a long way to go in presenting its case against the ex-constable. This morning's testimony focused on what Berrientes Vela told her clerk upon learning the clerk would be interviewed by the Texas Rangers. Looking outside with live cam, it is a pleasant 88 degrees, but boy, is my imagination or is it super humid out there? Oh my goodness, Ursula, I'm glad you said that because that by far is going to impact everyone this week, the humidity. I want everyone to think very tropical in nature for the forecast over the next few days. What does that mean? It means humidity and an opportunity for rain, at least a chance for showers and storms just about every day. It's 86 in San Antonio right now, but it feels like 91 because of the high humidity. Here's some headlines this week to talk about. Temperatures will be in the low 90s. That's the good news, but it will be very humid all week long. And scattered downpours are going to be possible throughout this week. Is it going to rain everywhere, every day? No, but there is the opportunity there for rain. And speaking of the tropics, there are a few areas to watch. I'll have those details for you coming up in just a bit. David. Thank you, Sarah. A man barges into a northwest side apartment, a gun blazing. Police say the suspect kicked in the apartment door, accused the man inside of being a thief, and then shot him in the chest. This happened just before 10 last night on Evers Road near Loop Northwest Loop 410. The victim taken to the hospital in serious condition. At last check, police do not have anybody arrested as of yet. San Antonio police are looking for a man who barges into a southeast side apartment with murder on his mind. They say he shot two men who were inside that home, killing one of them. The apartment complex is on the Southeast Cross, not far from W.W. White. As Katrina Weber reports, police also trying to find out why it happened. San Antonio police officers who were called to the 4,000 block of East South Cross are trying to learn more about someone who showed up here uninvited. They say a man with a gun kicked in the door of a ground floor apartment at the reserve at Pecan Valley after nine last night then started shooting. Two men inside were hit. Officers at the scene told us a 26-year-old was shot in the foot while the other man was wounded in his chest. That 20-year-old died later at a hospital. News of the shooting seems to have spread quickly among neighbors. Even today, many of them are still talking about it. And it seems someone has left a candle as a memorial. No one wanted to talk about what happened on camera. Police, though, are hoping someone with information will talk to them. Right now, they say they don't have any clues when it comes to this killer. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New details this noon in a crash investigation just north of downtown. Police now say a driver was taken into custody for DWI. It comes after officers say that that person started driving the wrong way on Highway 281 near Josephine Street. They eventually slammed into another driver. A second driver involved was taken to the hospital but should be okay. No matter what corner of the city it seems, chances are you're going to hit a road closure these days. That's why traffic authorities Stephen Cavazos is on the job. He wants to warn you of potential trouble spots, but also the detours you might want to take. The road work continues in and around the Alamo City throughout the month of August and into the early days of September. So make sure you plan your commute ahead of time. Let's see what you can expect. So Loop 1604, this time over on the northeast side, overhead structure work continues will, or will actually be taking place on Monday, August 29th and wrap on Wednesday, August 31st. This is for those late night owls or early bird commuters, 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. That's when you can expect alternating main lane closures from Palisades Drive to Pat Booker Road. Let's take a look here at Loop 
410 over on the south side of San Antonio. Utility work will begin on Tuesday, August 30th and wrap on Thursday, September 1st. This does take place during the day, so 9 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon is when you can expect a single main lane closure in both directions from Old Pearsall Road to I-37. Let's take another look here at 281 over on the north side of San Antonio. We all know there is a lot of work out there, but according to TechSot, bridge work will continue on Friday, September 9th. That will be overnight. 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning is when you can see that full closure of the intersection there at Wilderness Oak. But if you'd like to find out what other areas you can expect to see some closures at, go ahead and open your phone and scan this QR code. That will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page, and that has a list of the current closures that are taking place in and around the Alamo City. Tonight, people in Uvalde will get a chance to ask questions and voice their opinions as the district prepares for the upcoming school year. A public hearing, town hall meeting, and special school board meeting set to be held this evening. It all starts at 6.30. Neighbors will be able to address the district's budget and tax rate proposal. The community will also get to comment on changes and updates for the 2022-23 school year. That includes safety and security plans. The meeting will be held in the John H. Harrow Auditorium. A major moment for NASA's gonna have to wait. An ambitious lunar mission won't happen for a few more days now. Why it was delayed again and what it means for the space agency's future. A look back at the big Saturday of high school football in the Dome, a wrap-up of the KSAT Pigskin Classic coming up in sports. A local theater wants to inspire and connect all of us while putting on a pretty good show. How they're using local talent to make that happen. The Public Theater San Antonio is back and ready for a season of excitement and full shows. Max Massey is going to give us an inside look at the historic plan and the big picture breakdown of economic development. Take a look around. We are here in the Public Theater of San Antonio. It is calm and quiet now, but these seats will be filled. We're going to be rocking and rolling. Joined here with Claudia. So what can people expect this season? This season, people can expect a lot of musicals and plays with music and some new pieces that we're excited to offer the city. All right, this is your inaugural season. This is. What makes it so special for you? It makes it so special because this is the first full season that I chose. And I chose with community input, patron input, staff input. So I didn't do it alone. But it's exciting because it signals a few changes, including that we're starting the season off with a play called American Mariachi, which is a play that's been taking the country by storm, being performed at various regional theaters. We are the the state premiere here in San Antonio. The playwright is even going to come visit us at some point during the run, but it is the first play written by a Latin American playwright in our 100 year history produced by our company, if you can believe it. So the city council right now in the midst of budget talks, how important are arts and culture to our city? Oh, it's so important. We are one of the, the only one of the top 10 largest cities in the United States without a regional professional theater. And this theater, our theater company, is the closest thing to that. So if we really want to be on par with one of the major American cities, it's really important that the city and our patrons and our communities support the professional performing arts theaters like ours. How do we know a lot of people are going to be interested? Dates, times, how they can get involved? What would you tell them? They can look at thepublicsa.org. We have information on all our shows this season, including information on how to get really good discounts by buying subscriptions or flex packages. All right, Claudia, thank you so much. If you guys have any questions, we're going to have all that information. Just head to ksat.com. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Outside with live cam earlier, Sarah said it was tropical-like, so I'm looking for palm trees and fruity drinks with umbrellas in them. <laughs> but you, you might want to do like Max and wear a tiara to hide your bad, humid hair. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's going to be very humid. That is the big story for this week. And the big story, too, is that there will be opportunities for rain here and there. Now, unfortunately, the aquifer could use a good drink of water. It's down eight-tenths of a foot over the past 24 hours. Take a look at the pollen count. We're in the middle of fall elm season, so molds and fall elm are high as well. Just looking at that word fall makes me excited for some cooler temperatures. We'll tell you what the humidity will do for the heat index value, and I'll take you through the future cast over the next few days coming up. Family leisure.
It was a moment nearly five years in the making, but after multiple mechanical delays and lightning strikes near the Kennedy Space Center, NASA had to scrub today's rocket launch. Again, the new Artemis Generation rockets are the first step to returning astronauts to the moon. CNN's Ivan Rodriguez is in Titusville, Florida, where NASA explains why there was no launch today. Launch Director Charlie Blackwell Thompson has called a scrub of the attempt of launch of Artemis 1. NASA will have to wait four more days to launch its most ambitious lunar mission in half a century after discovering an engine bleed with one of the rocket's four engines. It's been almost 50, more, 50 years uh, since we had anybody get beyond low Earth orbit. Since NASA's Apollo 17 mission, one of man's greatest achievements has only lived on as a memory until now. There's a lot that's riding on this test flight. Although it is an uncrewed mission, its success is key to astronauts orbiting the moon within two years, followed by a moon landing by 2025, all before continuing on to Mars. Uh, 20 years from now, we will be out, uh, as the song goes, playing among the stars. Artemis 1 will send a capsule called Orion to orbit the moon, traveling on board suited mannequins collecting data for future missions. Then comes one of the most challenging parts, re-entry. Coming in hotter and faster than any uh, rocket or spacecraft yet. How hurtful to the program would it be if it doesn't go right? Well, that's what you do in a test flight. You stress it to see what is going to work and what does not work. If the engineers can fix the issue with engine number three in time, the next launch window will be this Friday. In Titusville, I'm Ivan Rodriguez reporting. Can't wait to see that thing eventually go. I know, going fun. back to the moon. What I'm really looking forward to is the high quality video images from close to the surface of the moon. You know, it's been, I haven't seen those yet. That'd be cool. Here no atmosphere go. on the moon, but there's an atmosphere here and it's gonna be a little active over the next few days. We're gonna have some opportunities for rainfall, all because of tropical moisture moving in. Take a look. Anywhere you see these greens, that's very deep tropical moisture. It's going to be moving on shore over the coming days and really sticking around for most of this week. So that gives us a very tropical forecast in nature. Think about a trip to the beach that you've taken recently. I bet you it was humid and I bet you there were kind of daily chances for a few downpours here and there. That's going to be the case for us over the next few days. Today, this afternoon, chance for rain is pretty low, 20 to 30 percent. But just to be alert, during the evening commute, you may have to turn on those windshield wipers once or twice, so keep that in mind. But as we head into tomorrow, we do have a little bit better rain chances. You can see that on the future cast here, about a 40 percent chance, especially tomorrow afternoon, for some widely scattered downpours. Wherever it does rain, the rain could be heavy at times and unfortunately as was the case last week there will be those that get rain and there will be those that miss out on the rainfall that is the nature of tropical downpours scattered too. Wednesday chance for rain is about 30 percent in coverage but still there and then by Thursday we'll bump it up again to 40 percent but in general uh, over the coming days our rain chance is going to be anywhere from 30 to 40 percent coverage into Labor Day weekend as well as we get closer to Labor Day weekend we'll be able to refine that forecast I know a lot of people have plans outdoors on Labor Day weekend want, we want to keep you updated and so make sure to have that case at weather authority app handy we're going to be sending updates throughout the week for the weekend so what are your needs to know this week first of all this is what you need to plan for plan for it being very humid every single day bad hair days you know the drill and it is going to be a high heat index value in the afternoon also plan for hit or miss rain chances each day Again, is it going to rain everywhere every day? No, absolutely not. But there is the chance there every day. What we're watching for is wherever rain sets up, we could have some locally heavy rains, big fat tropical raindrops, and not much motion in any rain that develops. 86 degrees outside right now. Winds are pretty calm. It already feels like it's a 91 because the humidity is very high. And as we take a look at the radar, you can see that there's a few showers along the coast here, uh, our coastal communities. So so 
in DeWitt County near Quero near Hallettsville we're seeing some of those heavier rain showers as well but it is quiet around San Antonio uh, however this afternoon there will be about a 30 percent chance for an isolated downpour high temperatures should be in the mid 90s this is actually going to be the warmest warmest day for us over the next several days that 95 though because it's so humid because dew points are at the top of the scale oppressively humid outside it's going to feel like it's closer to 100 this afternoon so make sure to stay hydrated if you have to be outside all right let's talk about the tropics there's an area of disorganized storms in the caribbean uh, see that has about a 20% chance of development by Friday, a very low chance for development by Friday. We'll be watching that. The uh, system, potential system that has a much better chance of development is out across the central Atlantic right now. It has about an 80% chance of developing into at least tropical storm Danielle. Uh, but it does look uh, like most uh, of the forecast models, these are the spaghetti plots here, keep it away from uh, the United States. So we'll be keeping an eye on that letting you know what's happening. It's been a very quiet tropical season uh, so far, and so we'll, we'll keep an eye on things for you. For now, just know that there's about a 30 to 40 percent chance for some isolated to widely scattered showers and storms this week. Highs will only be in the low 90s because of the extra clouds and the extra humidity. Coming up, we're going to take a look at how much rain we've seen so far this August compared to the year. I uh, hope you'll stick around for that. David Ursula. Sounds good, Sarah. Everybody recovering from a big day of football. Yeah, we're going to hear some from some fans about, well, look at that. That's just a great play. Fans are going to be giving us their reaction to uh, getting to play in the Dome, watching their team in the Dome, and uh, good news, bad news for SAFC coming up after the break. For today. San Antonio FC fell on the road to Indy 11 Saturday night, 1-0, but with a 18-5-3 record and 57 points, still hold the lead in the United Soccer League standings. The lone goal in the match was scored in the 40th minute when Robbie Dambrot found the net, even though SAFC outscored Indy or outshot them 20-5. Some good news, San Antonio has clinched a playoff berth already. They will head to the California next week. And here is their schedule. They're going out to Oakland to take on the Oakland Roots SC. That's Saturday night at 9 o'clock. The inaugural KSAT Pigskin Classic now in the book. Six schools competed in a triple header event at the Alamo Dome to start the season with a bang. Smithson Valley took on Reagan. Judson took on Johnson. And to cap it all off late in the night, it was the Brennan Bears and Steel Knights. What a showdown for that one. From game one to game three in the Dome, it was packed full of energy. Those in attendance say it was an event to remember. It's fun. It's like special because it's our senior year, so we really want to be able to do this. It's our last first game right, of the right. year. It's really our exciting. Last first game at the Alamo Dome. Like that's, it's different. An event to remember for all of us. I'm sure it will have memories last a lifetime for these kids. Yeah, it was nonstop football action from the morning until the evening. If you couldn't make it out to the event, make sure you sign up to be a KSAT Insider so you can get a heads up on all the other cool events we've got coming up, including VIP experiences. You can do that by going to KSAT.com. And the day was not just about football. The event also helping 12 local students pay for college for their participation in the KSAT Pigskin Classic. KSAT 12 awarded two students from each of the six schools a $4,000 scholarship. The recipients range from the football players themselves to some of the musicians and performers who participated in the halftime shows. You can read more about the recipients on KSAT.com. And a local organization supports football players with spinal cord injuries. will now be able to help more people. KSAT General Manager and Phil Lane and Sports Director Greg Simmons presented Gridiron Heroes with a check for $25,000 during the weekend's event. So far, Gridiron Heroes has helped some 90 athletes. They've also supplied 15 athletes and families with specially designed vans. And a very ironic twist during the weekend of high school football, not to mention emotional, the Uvalde community still recovering from that shooting that took 21 lives. The Uvalde football team honoring the victims by having one of their players wear number 21 in honor of the 21 lives lost. Friday, the Uvalde Coyotes traveled to Carrizo Springs to open the season. And Friday night, plenty of fans made that trip. The Wildcats showing their respect wearing a special decal on their helmets. In the end, the Coyotes pulled off the huge victory.
I don't know where this stands in the games that I've won as far as importance because I've won some big playoff games and things like that. But right now, with the weight of the world on our shoulders, and what you came out here this night, I love you like you're my own children. You understand that? I could not be more proud of you. Obviously, a very emotional coach, and, and here's what makes it such a special evening. The final score, 21-13. No way. Yes. Amazing. Yep. A government program that delivers free COVID tests to your door, now ending, and you just have a few days to order yours. Pieces of metal in cookie containers leading to a recall. The products involved and where they were sold. Coming up. Groceries, electricity, household items, yeah, prices are up, and it may have you looking for ways to save. So why not help the, gov <laughs> the government, why not help the environment? <laughs> Let's do that while you're at it. Coming up today at 5, 12 on your slides, Marilyn Ward shares the simple swapping you can do to make your home both a budget and environmentally conscious. An update on the war in Ukraine, the missile attacks on Europe's largest nuclear power plant, Russia and Ukraine both blaming each other for those attacks. Today, a team of UN inspectors is visiting that nuclear plant after fears of a disastrous radiation leak has led uh, officials to distribute emergency doses of iodine even in neighboring communities. All of this as Russia is continuing its shelling elsewhere in the country. ABC's Ike Jachi has more. Today, the International Atomic Energy Agency sending a team of top experts amid continued missile attacks on the Zaporizhia atomic power plant, Europe's largest. The UN nuclear watchdog injecting a ray of hope, tweeting this picture of the team and writing, the day has come. Support and assistance missions is now on its way. This comes as the group says shelling hit the nuclear plant itself, striking two special buildings dangerously close to the plant's reactors. All safety systems remain Remain operational with no increase in radiation levels so far. Russia and Ukraine pointing fingers at each other for the attacks on the nuclear plant. Over the weekend, Ukrainian officials claiming Russian forces have been shelling the entire region with rockets for 14 hours. Several plant workers injured, as well as two children. For months, the agency has sought access to the plant, which has been occupied by Russian forces and run by Ukrainian workers since the early days of the now more than six-month-old war. Ukraine accusing Russia of new rocket and artillery strikes at or near the plant, striking an apartment block. The nuclear facility has two operating reactors. Last week, they were temporarily knocked offline due to the barrage of shelling. In the northeast, Russia ramping up strikes in Kharkiv, Ukraine's second largest city. Shells falling in residential areas inside the city. The U.N. inspectors are expected to arrive later this week. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. In a summer of heavy rains elsewhere, Mississippi is the next state to brace for significant flooding. The Pearl River near Jackson is cresting today, close to major flood level, putting hundreds of homes at risk of high water. During breaks in the days of rain that they've gotten, some residents took the precaution to leave town, and they're being told not to return until the all-clear is given. Other areas could flood, including parts of Louisiana, Alabama, and Florida. A popular snack item being recalled from store shelves for safety-related concerns. 44-ounce containers of Market Pantry White Fudge Animal Cookies are now part of a voluntary recall. According to the Food and Drug Administration, the product is questioned might contain small metal fragments. The cookies come in a clear plastic container shaped like a bear and sold nastily in Target stores. Consumers who bought these cookies are advised to return them to the place of purchase for a full refund. The number of children going to the emergency room for eating small lithium batteries is on the rise. These are known as button batteries, and they can be found in numerous household objects, including handheld games and calculators. According to a study published in the Pediatrics Journal, these poisonings have doubled from 2010 to 2019 compared to the decade before. The Children's Hospital of Philadelphia says button batteries can cause chemical reactions that may burn the esophagus or, in some cases, lead to death. Parents are advised to avoid changing batteries in front of your children and to throw out dead batteries immediately. 
Camping trips, a big part of summer with campfires, s'mores, nature, and ticks. Everyone knows you need to test for Lyme disease, but you may be missing some more common tick-borne di diseases. Here's more with ABC's Justin Finch. From red splotches to bullseye patterns to bumps indistinguishable from other bug bites, tick bites may be painless, but they leave a mark. Now, a study finds some doctors are quick to test for Lyme disease, but may miss more common tick-borne diseases. The most dangerous part of the tick is its saliva, which can carry dangerous microbes that cause serious health problems. The top microbes of concern include three types of bacteria, Borrelia, Ehrlichia, and Rickettsia. Borrelia causes Lyme disease, the most well-known tick-borne disease, but not the most common. University of North Carolina researchers found that doctors test for Lyme disease over twice as often as for the other two diseases caused by ticks, even though the other two can be seven to ten times more common. Doctors say it's a reminder of the importance of acting quickly if you notice a tick bite. With your Medical Minute, I'm Justin Finch. The federal government says it's out of money for those free at-home COVID tests, so the program is ending this coming Friday. The Biden administration first launched that program through the COVID.gov website in January. Americans were able to order four free tests per household and could place a second order in March. A third round began in May, making every household eligible for more than a dozen COVID tests. The COVID.gov website, though, shows a message that says ordering tests will be suspended on Friday, September 2nd. Congress has not approved additional funding for this to continue. Let's get outside with live cam. This is becoming a good pattern. Clouds, little humidity, but a chance of rain, and that's always nice. I mean, think about what it could be, right? We could yeah. be in the triple digits, tempting records with absolutely no chance for rain. Instead, this week is going to look a lot like last week. You remember last week, some of us got some rain, some more than others, but still this week we're going to have a few opportunities here and there. It's 86 degrees outside. It feels like 91. By the way, here's a look at the heat index around the metro area. It already feels like it's 90. 99 in Lotus, 98 Port SA. It feels like it's 96 in Bulverde, 98 in Comfort. Feels like it's 91 in Seguin and 96 in New Braunfels. We do have some showers along our coastal communities near Hallettsville, Cuero, uh, Port Lavaca. Really no major lightning around here either. These are just some do, uh, some downpours down near Beeville as well. As we head into the peak heating hours of the day here, one or two of these may develop closer to that I-35 corridor for the evening commute. So for your bus stop, forecast picking up the kids today 95 a 20 to 30 percent chance for a few downpours coming up we're going to talk about better rain chances tomorrow for most of us and we'll take a look at a preview at labor day weekend david thank you sarah now to the vatican where pope francis is meeting with church leaders including the 20 new cardinals named over the weekend among them an american bishop known for more liberal views on abortion and gay rights abc's terry moran has more from rome today behind closed doors at the vatican pope francis meeting with almost all of the cardinals of the catholic church uh, they haven't had a meeting like this a gathering like this in almost eight years and it comes amid those swirling rumors of a possible papal resignation now pope francis himself he said he has no plans to retire but he does talk about it and with the new cardinals that he created this weekend in a solemn ceremony at saint peter's basilica pope francis has now named more than 60 percent of the men who will choose the next pope and by and large these cardinals they share francis's vision of a church that is truly global more diverse and less doctrinaire, like the new American Cardinal, Robert McElroy of San Diego. He opposes denying Holy Communion to American politicians who support uh, abortion rights. And he has also signed a letter last year in support of LGBTQ youth. So whenever Pope Francis leaves the scene, it's clear he has put his stamp on this church for years to come. Terry Moran, ABC News, the Vatican. An animal encounter with an Alabama lawman really got his goat literally <laughs> this after the animals climbed into his patrol car how he was able to get these kids out 
A streaming series takes Lord of the Rings fans into familiar territory to tell some new stories, how the second age of Middle Earth is coming to life. A famous baseball player still making history decades after he last suited up for the New York Yankees. We're going to take a look at Mickey Mantle's new stat after the break. These are your top headlines from Cheddar News. The FDA plans to authorize updated versions of Pfizer and Moderna's COVID boosters around Labor Day. That, according to NBC News, both Pfizer and Moderna's bivalent vaccines target the BA4 and BA5 Omicron subvariants, as well as the original coronavirus strain, all in a single shot. Pfizer is seeking authorization for people 12 and older, while Moderna is seeking authorizations for all adults. Meanwhile, in a new report, government researchers are saying they found a way now to charge electric car batteries up to 90% in just 10 minutes. The method like likely five years away from making its way to the market. The new technology would make charging an electric vehicle as fast as filling up your gas tank. And September 3rd is $3 movie day. This coming Saturday will be a nationwide discount day at more than 3,000 theaters. Major chains like AMC and Regal Cinemas also participating. The move is a bid to get moviegoers back after low summer sales. Hey, I'm at your Cheddar News update. I'm Baker Machano coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. Do you, maybe, does your son collect baseball cards? He does. He does? Better check them. The Mick earns a mint. A vintage baseball card of legendary baseball player Mickey Mantle sold for $12.6 million. All right, I'm definitely checking. <laughs> Heritage Auctions says it was more than enough to make this the most valuable sports collectible ever. The company says the Mantle card brought in that historical amount largely because of how well it was preserved over the decades. Mantle suited up for the New York Yankees for 17 seasons as was inducted into the Baseball's Hall of Fame back in 1974. An Alabama deputy facing off with a pair of goats and learned they don't always do as they're told. Deputy Casey Thrower was delivering some legal papers Friday when one goat jumped into his squad car uninvited. The goat then started munching down on some of his paperwork that a second goat thought It'd be kind of fun to jump on top of the patrol car and perch yourself on the light bar. Deputy was able to shoot both goats away eventually. Thrower has been serving Madison County for 40 years. Deputies joke that he was also their goat, G-O-A-T, as in the greatest of all time. Oh, those kids. You know, Can't I control them. I, I was, I used to, I, in rodeo, there's an event called goat tying. Would you do that? Or I what? actually did that. I got uh, second place in a collegiate rodeo. That, no time. I want to see a picture of that it. or a video of that. I can show you later. Okay, sounds good. All right, the aquifer is down eight tenths of foot over the past 24 hours. We've got three allergens out there right now. Moles are high as they have been the last few days, but fall elm is also high. So if you're noticing that your allergies are impacting you a little bit differently, it might be because of that fall elm. Pigweed is low. Hit or miss showers once again in our forecast this week. I'll have those details coming up. Kind of, I don't want to say it's ho-hum, but it's kind of ho-hum. It's kind of the same thing every day, which is good. Yeah, it's good when there's rain chances. Yeah. Exactly. The Keep them in the so. forecast, yeah. please. And, and again, I can't stress this enough. It, it's not going to rain everywhere every day, a lot like last week, but there are the opportunities for rain in the forecast. Let's take a look, though, at August. August has been not too bad for us. In fact, we've seen more than two inches of rain since August 1st. That's fairly average, just a little bit of a surplus right now of 17 hundredths of an inch of rain. But we've still got a long way to go. I mean, when we look at the year so far, we've only seen a little bit more than six seven inches of rain. That is more than a foot below the amount of rain we should have by this point. And so it is good to see that there are some chances of rainfall in our forecast. I'm showing you a cool graphic here. This is a look at the moisture content in the atmosphere. If you want the meteorological words for it, it's called precipitable water. 
We call them P-Watts. That's your meteorology for the day. Anywhere you see these reds, that's where it's very dry in the atmosphere. Wherever you see these deep greens, that's where it's very, very moist in the atmosphere. So we've got some deep tropical moisture that's going to slug into South Central Texas this week, keeping uh, our atmosphere very tropical in nature. What does that mean? A, very humid and very humid every single day. And then B, we're gonna have a, an opportunity for rain here and there throughout the week. Generally about a 30 to 40% chance for showers and storms each day. Again, that's still a pretty large chance that it won't rain at your house, but the chance for rain is there. So as we look at the radar right now, most of that rain is across the coastal plain at the moment, closer to Hallettsville, Cuero, Gonzales, those areas you can see as we zoom in here near Hallettsville, just some showers and some showers in north uh eastern DeWitt County as well. Not a ton of lightning with these either. As we get into the peak heat of the day though here in San Antonio, we could see one or two uh, showers and storms pick up this afternoon. So outside right now, there's a look at those puffy cumulus clouds starting to grow in the vertical there, trying to get to the point of raining. It's 86, but it feels like 91. Uh, that is because the humidity is just so gosh darn high. Here's a look at dew points. Dew points are in the 70s. This is about as high dew points get this time of year and so because of that Today's forecast highs are in the low to mid 90s, 95 in Hondo, 95 in Uvalde, 95 in Pleasanton, 94 in New Braunfels. But this is what it's going to feel like this afternoon. Should feel like it's closer to 100 degrees around San Antonio. Many places out there going to be very humid. All right, let me take you through the future cast. This is a snapshot of like of right now. You can see that it's overdoing it a little bit. But as we head into the afternoon, again, one or two isolated downpours are going to be possible right around the top of the evening commute so coverage should be about 20 to 30 percent as we lose the daytime heating our rain chance goes away for the day but tomorrow there's better rain chances take a look at this high-res future cast first in the morning it should be fairly quiet around san antonio maybe some sprinkles perhaps even some heavier rain out across areas near hallettsville and then as we head into the afternoon we start to see our chances for showers and storms blossom about a 40 percent chance as early as noon and then as we head into the afternoon afternoon look at that much better rain chances and again notice the scattered nature of these downpours it's not raining everywhere in this model uh, all at once very scattered in nature there will be the haves and the have nots not only tomorrow but through most of this week so your KSAT 12 hour forecast for the remainder of the day will be warming up to 95 this afternoon 30 percent chance for a few downpours and then in the evening temperatures will only be in the 80s it's going to be very humid looking at that seven day forecast you can start to see that uh, our highs this week are not going to be too bad. Low 90s, but that heat index will make it feel hotter. The first part of Labor Day weekend, again, one or two showers and storms are possible. About a 30% chance right now we'll be able to refine that forecast for Labor Day weekend as we get closer to Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Looks great. Thank you so much, Sarah. Sleepless nights might be something we're all familiar with, and while you're tossing and turning, may yield nothing more than a groggy morning. Pop star Taylor Swift says when her mind wanders, she actually writes some new music. And a new series takes Lord of the Ring fans back to Middle Earth. However, this time there are no hobbits. Insider. Pop star Taylor Swift releasing another album. The singer tweeted the news yesterday that came after she first made the big announcement on the MTV Video Music Awards while accepting the moon person for Video of the Year. And that's the night's most coveted award. The new album is called Midnight. It's going to be her first full-length set of new material since last year's Evermore. And in it, she says she'll share the stories of 13 sleepless nights that have been scattered throughout her life. It is due out on October 21st. A new streaming series is debuting on Prime Video this week, and it brings viewers back to the world of Middle Earth. CNN's Rick Damagella has more for us. We thought the war at last was ended. Fans of J.R.R. Tolkien's novels and the films made from them have a new era of Middle Earth to explore in The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. We thought our light would never dim. 
Taking place several millennia before the events of The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, the series features familiar names from the elves. It's yeah. really the job of dreams. I'm, I got to learn so many skills. I got to work with so many people, like, we worked with the best craftsmen in all of New Zealand. To the humans. There's signposts along the way for some of the canon characters that we, that, that we kind of, y y you know the trajectory that you're going towards, but the exciting thing is how do you get there? One day this will be your kingdom. And the dwarves. Durin is a, a, a prince of Khazad Doom, and he's in line, uh, you know, to the th first in line to the throne. Uh, he's married to Disa, and he's friends with Elrond. But we Harfoots have each other. There are no hobbits, but their close relatives, the Harfoots, are integral to the story. They're quite hilarious. They've got a lot of heart and a lot of a lot of joy, even you know, amidst all of all of the danger that constantly is around the corner for them. And one of those dangers is a dark power casting a shadow across Middle Earth. He has not one name, but many. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Well, Looks good. good. Yeah. Interesting. Let's get downtown. Mike and Fiona, you know, they were doing all the halftime shows, introducing the bands, and so you got to wonder if their ears are still ringing. Yeah. Oh, that was so much fun. We're going to have right. more on that coming up, too. <laughs> yes, but right now we have got the fabulous Ma Alice Harper, owner of Ma Harper Creole Kitchen, joining us to share one of her classic southern recipes and one of her secrets to fried chicken. A bowl of ice? Yes, it tenderizes the chicken. By letting it sit nice, and then you coat it, well, right? You don't have to dip it in milk or egg because it'll be wet already. Okay, a great little tip. We're gonna, and let me tell you, we've already tasted the fried chicken. It's really good. <laughs> yes, and well, we know things can get kind of crazy this time of year, so Elsa Fernandez is here with ways to help you relax. Yes, have y'all ever tried fresh eucalyptus in the shower? All you need to do is put it over your shower head and you make an at-home spa experience. And she's got even a little home pampering mm -hmm. kit that we're gonna uh, assemble and uh, try out a little bit. Okay, you know by one name, Rudy. Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. Yes, Rudy Rudiger is gonna be in town. We're gonna tell you how you can meet up with him. One of those movies, I still cry <laughs> at all the time. And yeah, we're gonna recap the Pigskin Classic. We had so much fun out there and boy three fantastic games we're gonna look back at that and eat some fried chicken too we'll hold that and more when SA Life continues opportunities for rain in the coming days again about a 30 to 40 percent coverage so it's not gonna rain everywhere every day but there's a chance high temperatures will be in the low 90s which is a nice welcome change from July when we were in the wow. digits it may actually be difficult for us to get another 100 degree day in the books but we'll see what September holds for us either way we'll be keeping you updated as we head into Labor Day weekend looking forward to some more rain thank you Sarah as soon as Mike and Fiona said Cajun food you got all excited, didn't you? Ma Harper had a little container of mm -hmm. Tony Sashray's Creole seasoning, my cousin. So Ooh. she's on the right track. But I want to know more about the how you tenderize the chicken with rice. Did mm. I hear that right? Let's find out. SA Live starts right now. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. that chicken right over here. Bring those wings in for Lenny. You know that plate was fuller. <laughs> Ted, was and I, it? Ted and I had to taste it. Oh, I uh -huh. figured you guys got started already. Well, good afternoon. I'm Fiona Gorstein. Yeah. And I'm my Ghoster Hage. And I'll tell you what, we are still just giddy with excitement over this football weekend that we had. Opening weekend for a lot of high schools. And of course, we had the Pigskin Classic out there. But there were a lot of other great games that went on Friday and Saturday. Yes, so we want to see your high school football and halftime photos from the players to the cheerleaders. I mean, the marching band, the dance team, pep squads, all of it. If you were there, we want to see it. Be sure to tag us at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter. Six of the best teams, three great football games, three halftime shows, five points separated all three games. That was it. And we got some things you didn't see on KSAT's Pigskin Classic on TV. Yes, here's a look behind the scenes.
production. So all of our folks, I mean, there must be at least how many KSAT people here today? 50, I think. Not to mention all of the KSAT folks that are back at the station. And here's the broadcast area. We've got all this remote set up. It is being controlled by a truck out there. And this is where Greg and David and Larry broadcast from. We've been doing our halftime cut-ins right here as well. Is this yours? The one with the... Yes, the Yes, it's upside down. Yes, 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 yes. I've got your bags. Oster Hage? Hold on. What is your bags here? T and so M O. So I'm calling it the Mike Oster Hage. <gasps> In their own separate packet, we have some highlighters <laughs> and some pens. Oh, in another separate bag. Oh my gosh, can I just say that I am very impressed with how neatly tied all hey, of your me, chargers are. Wraps. Okay, look at my bag of chargers compared to Mike's bag of chargers. Somebody's got time. All right, we're here at the KSAT Insider Gathering. There's a, pic there's a picture station up here. There's a whole backdrop and everything. Okay. We found the swag bags. What's in it? Hey. Oh, it's a towel. Oh, Woo! yeah. Very cool. Rally it. Rally. Oh. Like an old Try it on. Try it on. Helmet, I got to so. know if this fits your head. Of course it won't. Oh, it, it does. It does. <laughs> History books there, Mike. Look at that. Love Look at that. the old Monday Night Football music <laughs> on there. <laughs> well, we learned over the weekend that you can look forward to the KSAT Pigskin Classic next year too. So we are very excited. It was. It's almost like waiting for Christmas now. So hey, speaking of football, Rudy Ruger is in San Antonio this weekend, and Jen tells us where you can hang out with him, and he's helping a local scholarship fund a little bit later on in the show. Well, did you know that August was Black Business Month? So we had to get one of the longest running black business owners in town here to celebrate. She's been on national TV for her Creole cooking and was even supported by San Antonio Spurs legends like David Robinson and Sean Elliott. We are privileged to call her friend Ma Alice Harper, owner of Ma Harper's Creole Kitchen, is with us and got some fantastic Southern recipes. It is so good to see you, my dear. It's good to see you guys. Welcome, welcome. Big All right. girl. 93, I'm a bumblebee, but I ain't gonna sting nobody but me. <laughs> okay, we we're talking about your fried chicken, and if you didn't see this, you have got that sitting in just ice cubes? It's just ice. What does that do for the chicken? It tenderizes it. Now, I've heard a lot of people talk about like putting it in maybe um, buttermilk or something like that. Oh, you're you want all that. No? No buttermilk? We didn't have it when I was coming up. Okay. And you said that, that um, when you kind of do in the rooster there, you had to put well, it in your mom used to put it in ice? Getting, eating everything out the field. Yeah. Out the, uh, you don't put that ice in there. Out the field. That's enough. No? That's a enough? A little bit. Okay. That's right. She okay, knows. just a little bit. All right. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Let me move my script over there, so, and then shake this up. Okay. All right, so you should get everything off the field, and mom, mom would tenderize the rooster in ice. Well, we we, you know, do the the natural, kill him, clean right. him, cut him up, and cook him. But just before we, uh, you know, finish cooking it, we drop ice. We didn't have ice cube. We just chopped ice and let okay. it go. So an ice bath. Yeah. All right, and you got uh, it some. Tenderized. Even if you're cooking any kind of meat, like a smothered. Yeah. Just put a little ice, and it makes the meat tenderized because it opens the pores of the meat. Oh. Okay. And about 350 on the oil there, and how long is this going to cook? Well, normally I don't have the basket. I let it cook about eight. Nine minutes, I pull it up. Because once you have a basket and you pull up your chicken, mm -hmm. it's still cooking. And it'll be cooking in, you know, another five minutes. Okay. And then you drop it back down. Okay. Well, through the magic <laughs> of television, we have some pre-cooked already. Ha, ha, ha. 
And, mm -hmm. yes. and it's not chewy. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, mm. Okay, what are you making, Fiona? Okay. Excuse me while I eat. All right. Okay. I call that the Trinity sausage. Okay. So you put the sausage, and then you put the Trinity. You okay. stir it up. Now that was a meal for us. So this is onion, celery, red and green bell peppers, parsley. We'll stir that up. Okay, and let that cook down a bit. I have to see. Okay. How's that so, look? So That's what would be your good. favorite thing to cook? All of it. I love cooking. You do? Just anything? Yeah, I need a little water in the top. Okay. We you see, what are you water? doing? Okay. We, it's like no oil. The oil in the sausage will give you flavor. Everything you need. The flavor out of the meat goes in, and we need a little more oil, oil, oil and a top, and it's like simmering. And you could take this and put it over rice, or you could put it over mashed potatoes, or you can do what we did in the country, made a sandwich and was glad to have it. And speaking of rice, you've got some rice over here with some top red of beans top on top of it. It's not doing it, it's messed up. Okay. And how long, is your, how long has your place been in town here now? How long have you been in San Antonio? God have allowed me to operate 31 years May 15th. Wow, and that's here in town, and you grew up in New Orleans, right? Oh yeah, I've been in New, I've been in San Antonio 56 years. Now, I want everybody to know, mm. I've never seen a U-Haul go behind a hearse. So I don't mind giving recipes. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> I have them. Right, right. So I want to tell the ladies, stop buying Jiffy. Don't do it. The purpose of that, the Sam A. Oil, you tell I'm from Louisiana, and milk, you're putting in, buying everything else. Yeah. Just flour, cornmeal, sugar. Okay. This was our cake. It is delicious. It's We've already incredible. sampled that it, as it, well. You know, I'm the second nose of 16, so whatever. We were grateful. <laughs> Ma <laughs> Harper's Creole yes. Kitchen. All right, for more information, of course, just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Thank you so much, Ma. Still ahead on the show, snake rattle and roll. We're letting these... So you want to Little, the reptiles out where you can see them and many more at a one-of-a-kind event. But first, get straight A's, get a half dozen donuts free. How doing good in school can pay off with delicious rewards all around town. You don't want to miss this Money Saving Monday. That's next on SA Live. Thanks.